This afternoon, I take the opportunity to speak to us on a topic that is on the top of the agenda when it comes to Christendom and going to heaven. It's a strong belief that before the tribulation, they will be raptured away into heaven. So I take this time, this, this opportunity this afternoon to speak about the pre-tribulation rapture. As we count up to the Feast of Trumpets, we are four, four days away from the Feast of Trumpets. As time worsens and we fall headlong towards the end of age, many of us are sure thinking that before the calamity strikes, which is the tribulation, Jesus himself will rapture them away into heaven. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> is there really a coming rapture? Is there a coming rapture? That is a good question that we should consider. Yes, you'll be raptured, but to where? I see this color bug is it, so you know that he'll be going to Jerusalem. Yes. <laughs> the modern religious use of the word rapture means the joyous capturing away of the saints into the cloud to meet Jesus and forever be with him in heaven. But if we take a good look at the scripture, as we are to do daily, we would see that there are in such great error that they themselves is going to be surprised of what is going to take place. One good rule is in studying any subject of the Bible is to begin at the first mentioned passage of what you are studying and then proceed from there with all scriptures referring to it. So you have yourself a little work to do in order to understand fully what a topic is about. Not just using the familiar scriptures and say, hey, this is what it means, this is what it's saying. No matter what you have believed about a certain doctrine, consider yourself ignorant before the Heavenly Father Yahweh each time you go to the scriptures. It's a wonder what he reveals to you when you approach it that way. If you approach the scripture with knowing what is already there, you already already imprison yourself within yourself. You have to have a free spirit and a child of a mind, as the word said, when you go to God. Willing to learn. Amen? Amen. Pray earnestly to him that he will grant you the leading of his Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 states, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Religious debates separate men into endless fractions. The church is a testimony of that. Several times it's split in splinters, <coughs> all because of doctrines. We must always strive to love our fellow men as we strive to love Yahweh. When we, when we disagree, let us let the light of Scripture decide on the path we travel, not our own intent in our hearts, but the path on which the Word itself leads. Yeah. Obviously, though, there are those who will not conform to such philosophy about conforming to what the word says when he himself knows that he's correct. The Bible don't instruct such a heart. <laughs> if you are so confident within what you already hold, there's no need to consult the Bible. Men of all are leaders beyond our time as of, have to come from the pinnacle that they sit on with a humble heart to really accept the true gospel. If you have a hard-hearted mind and mindset, you won't be able to be taught. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let us now examine two of the most familiar scriptures that is used to justify 
the rapture of the church. We will start with 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, which is a part of a quotation from Isaiah 13 and verse 14. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump will sound and the dead will raise in perishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Verse 54. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying, what is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We move on to the second scripture, which is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who are, who are falling asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive, who are left, will be caught up. This is the rapture together with them in the clouds to meet him in the air. Amen. And so will be always with the Lord. Amen. Therefore, I say, before the rapture, encourage yourself <laughs> and prepare. <laughs> sure. The similarity between these two chapters is obvious. Both describe a resurrection of believers and teach that the Christian will be given their resurrection bodies at the return of Christ. Right? Yes. Both also mention that this will happen at the sound of a trumpet. First Corinthians gave more information than Thessalonians. It said the seventh trumpet. So that means in order to, as I first declared to you, in order to find out now the part to take, you need to assemble all those scriptures referring to the trumpet. And I won't do that this afternoon, but I will choose only one to make my case. You may know or recall that the Apostle Paul taught using the Old Testament. So everything, every data that you have in the New Testament is taken from the Old. Paul could not come up with something new and teach the church. He wouldn't be accepted, neither what he teach. Paul could never introduce a concept that is never even mentioned by Moses or any of the prophets of old. The only way that one can see a pre-tribulation, a pre-tribulation rapture, is to view the scripture by taking First Thessalonians and forcing the idea up on to First Corinthians. That means you have to put them together in a sense to please what is already in your mind. You did not just read the scripture for what it is saying. You have to definitely make sense out of it by putting it in your light as you see it supposed to be. I think it is pretty clear that reading 1 Corinthians 15, that it does give timing of the rapture in relationship to when. Go back to verse 52. 
In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trump will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise imperishable. We find the trumpet sound in, in the book of Revelation. That's right. What those who believe in the three rapture don't accept, tribulation rapture don't accept, is this. If you examine all the trumpet song, Christ appear on the seventh. There is six that is sown before the seventh. So if you are going to be raptured away on the seventh, why would you think that you're going to escape the tribulation when one, two, three, four, five, six is talking about the tribulation? If you just take the time to examine what you are reading and apply them, you will realize that the error is far greater than they think it is. Seven trumpets sound, he will appear on the seventh, and the six before the seventh is described in gloom and doom. The tribulation itself. Take the time to justify what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. Amen? Amen. Sure. Revelation 9, <coughs> 1 to 4 state, and I am now going back to the fifth trumpet. We are not yet at the seventh. I'm going to take you to the fifth and show you something. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. He was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And sun and the hair were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpion on the earth. Verse 4 is the pinnacle. They were told not to arm the grass of the earth, or any green plants, or any trees, but only those people who do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. So if you are raptured away to heaven, who are these that are left on the earth with the seal of God <laughs> on their forehead? Mm. You escape the tribulation. You are already in heaven, drinking milk and honey. <laughs> <laughs> who are these people with the mark in their foreheads? Mm. And that is the mark of the, the Lord. Within us, who are baptized and following the, the, the will of the Lord right now, that mark is upon you. No doubt about that. But I am asking, who are these people that the Bible now speaks about that is in the, in the moment of the fifth, not the seventh? A clear scripture showing you that you are still here during the time of the tribulation. Keep in mind, the fifth trumpet was not the last, as I just stated. As the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 52 tells us, it was on the seventh trumpet that the appearance of Christ would be. You may have been taught that the man of sin cannot come until the body of Christ is raptured away. So, when the man of sin appears, no Christian should be here. So... I am saying, if the man of sin appear and you are still here, you need to check your time clock or check what you will follow it. The Bible itself says we are going to go through tribulation when, he, when the man of sin appear. That is going to be the great time of Christian being slaughtered. Right? So if, as according to these believers, you are here when he appear, tough luck for you. You did not get raptured. If I'm alive, I want to be here, according to the word of God. There is no such thing as a secret rapture. Yahshua will make his appearance to the whole world at the sound of a great trumpet, and the voice of the archangel will sound that trumpet. Every eye shall see him, and all families of the earth shall behold him. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Yeshua warns of terrible events to come on this earth. Matthew 24, 15 to 16, 20 to 21 state. 
When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read this, understand. Then let them which is in Judea flee into the mountains. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall it be great tribulation. Who is he speaking to at this time? Mm. Was it the believers? Or was it the people that are left behind to face the judgment? Mm -hmm. He was speaking to his believers at that time, which is we know at this time. <laughs> so in no form, we will be raptured up before the great tribulation. There is only one coming mention in our Bible, but for two purposes. First, to punish, to punish the wicked, and second, to receive his saints. There is this, this teaching that there's going to be two coming of Christ. He's going to rapture up and carry you off to drink your milk and honey, and then he, after he finish the judgment on earth, he will return and you will return with him. Falls again. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of Yahweh shall come like a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, I hear you say it. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But you, virgin, are not in darkness, that the day shall overtake you as a thief. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet of hope, our salvation. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Prepare for the future time by studying, praying, and remain obedient to the Lord. Amen. Protection is promised on this earth, not in heaven, Amen. for those who are faithful to our Savior Jesus Christ. <coughs>